Hey everyone, let's make a StarCraft 2 map. It's 2011, and StarCraft 2 needs more content, so let's make some. In the last episode, we implemented the movement mechanics of our hero, now we're gonna make him attack. But first things first, let me ask you a question. This is a question that not many people ask themselves, so if you don't know the answer to it, don't worry about it. And the question is, what is fun? Take a moment to think about that. The thing is, normal people just don't ask this. They just have it when they're playing a game. But I have my own philosophy of what fun is, and this is something that you won't see written anywhere. At least I don't think it's written anywhere, so this is just my own personal thoughts on this. There are three different types of fun, and I'll go over them in detail. The first type is discovery. This is the type of fun you have when you come across something new. Something you've never seen before, and you want to try it out. The best example I can give of this is the Nintendo Wii. Remember back in 2006 when this first came out? Everyone wanted to play it, even the non-gamers. That's because it introduced a new style of controlling a game, moving around the Wii remote, and basically simulating the, the actions in the game like swinging a sword, or pointing a gun. And as we already know, people are getting bored of it. That's because the novelty is wearing off. We've tried it, we've played it to death, now we're bored of it. And other things fall into the whole discovery side of the fun, such as picking up a new weapon you've never tried before in a first-person shooter, or trying out a new unit in a real-time strategy game. Basically, discovery is about trying something new, just so you could see what it can do. Obviously, it's not going to last very long. The second type of fun is Substance. This is where you'll be having the most fun. It involves having solid gameplay and solid game mechanics. Gameplay is the most important aspect of the game, so depending on which genre of video game you're talking about, the solid gameplay and game mechanics could be something like aiming a sniper rifle at someone's head, or having absolute control in a real-time strategy game, or effectively making combos in a fighting game, or maybe it's as simple as having really solid jumping mechanics in, say, Super Mario Bros. or Mega Man. And part of the fun in Substance is to have things that are usable, things that are not gimmicky. So basically, after the discovery part of the fun, the question you should be asking yourself is, is this something I'm going to be using throughout the game? Is it viable? And if it's not, why bother using it? If it's just a gameplay feature that's just gimmicky, that doesn't really contribute anything to the gameplay, there's not going to be much fun in using it. If you want substance in the gameplay, it has to be features, weapons, and things like that that cannot be removed without changing the gameplay. So it's things like all the weapons in every Mega Man game. They have strengths and weaknesses against certain types of enemies and bosses, so those are all viable and should stay in the game. Now the last type of fun you'll have, from my perspective, is the accomplishment, which is basically winning. Because when you win, it just feels good. You're like, yes, I just beat this boss that was really hard to defeat. Or maybe in a multiplayer FPS, you have the highest amount of kills. And you're like, yeah, I'm so awesome. People want that good feeling. And that good feeling is fun. Of course, even if you lose the game, you still get something out of it. You learn from your mistakes and you try again. So the next time you come across the situation that caused you to lose the first time around, you now know how to deal with it, and then you'll be able to overcome it, and then you can win. Now the only time accomplishment doesn't come into play is when the games are one-sided. I'm sure a lot of you have heard of the phrase, rage quit, and what happens is, players feel like they can't win the game, 
So then they ask themselves, if it's so one-sided, why bother playing? I want to play a game that I have a chance of winning. And that's why they leave. Of course, for the other team or the other players who are winning, it's too easy for them and it's going to be boring. There's really not much of that sense of accomplishment beating players that are just too easy. They probably don't know what they're doing, so you don't feel like you've accomplished anything. So there's the three different types of fun from my perspective. There's the discovery, trying out something new. There's the substance, having solid gameplay. And the accomplishment, feeling good about winning. Now I bring this up because when you're making gameplay for others to enjoy, you need to know how to show players a good time. If you're just a gamer, in terms of fun, it's just a light switch. Either you're having fun or you're not having fun. But when you're making the game, whether you're a modder or a professional game developer, you don't necessarily need to know what fun is, but it helps out a lot when it comes to understanding the mindset of the player. They want to have fun, so you gotta give it to them. But how do you give them fun? That is the key here. Keep that in mind as this series goes forward. Now let's go ahead and make our hero attack. Let me introduce you to the data editor. As you can see here, it's extremely complex. All these tabs, all these fields, all of this will completely overwhelm you, even if you've modded Warcraft 3 before. It's because it's just so significantly different. In Warcraft 3, all the unit properties were arranged in a static structure. You had the unit's health, the price to build them, the build time, the tech tree requirements to build them, even the art and sound set. A lot of these properties you end up not using, and a lot of times you actually need a third or fourth resource in some maps, so you end up extending that functionality through triggers. The spells and abilities also had a lot of limitations. If you wanted to make new abilities, you had to base it off of an existing one. All of the abilities' behaviors were hard-coded into the game, but you did have a few properties that you can modify but that was really it. If you wanted to extend the functionality of those abilities, you needed triggers. Keep in mind that all of this functionality was a godsend when you compare it to StarCraft 1, which was extremely hard to mod. Now that StarCraft 2 has come out, the Warcraft 3 map editor just seems so archaic and obsolete. That's because StarCraft 2 does things differently. The data editor is basically the unit editor, and everything here is organized similar to that of a relational database. All of the objects, like the units, the upgrades and weapons, uh, special abilities and stuff like that, they're all linked to each other. Think of it this way, you can have simple attacking units, or you can have spellcasters with many abilities. And the way it's set up is that the data editor is basically triggers for units. So it's like a trigger editor, completely separate from the map's triggers. I went through a lot of trouble trying to figure this out. The trigger editor was easy for me to figure out, because in Warcraft 3, I was already writing custom script for the triggers. And it's the same thing in Starcraft 2, but the data editor is completely different. So in order to figure this out, I needed to learn something. So I started looking up tutorials online. The first tutorial I found online was for a Shockwave ability. This is an ability similar to what the Torn Chieftain has from Warcraft 3, and possibly World of Warcraft if it's in there. I don't really know because I don't play World of Warcraft. I followed the instructions and I got ready to test it out. But first, we're gonna sprinkle some Zerglings around because we need something to test it on. And I threw in a few Hydralisks for good measure. As you can see here, it has some nice effects. The Shockwave moves outwards and damages everything in a line. That's nice and all, but that's not what we need. I don't want bullets going through enemies, although that would be cool. For my map, it's not. Next, I came across a fireball tutorial, where it shoots two fireballs out, and each fireball explodes when it comes in contact with an enemy. 
The creator of this tutorial even uploaded a video to YouTube that demonstrates this ability. I followed this tutorial, except instead of creating two fireballs, I just went with one. Now here's how it works in my map. As you can see, it explodes on contact with the Zerglings, and it does area of effect damage. Of course, I only want bullets to hit one enemy, but this type of behavior is exactly what I'm looking for. So, let's get to work. I drew a chart of how everything is linked. Now, if you don't understand anything that you see here, don't worry about it. All of these effects working in the background are going to be completely transparent to the player. You don't need to know how it works, you just need to know that it works. But now that I have the chart, I could go in and create all the objects and link them together. I also went into my Steam folder and took the M16 firing sound from Left 4 Dead 2 and imported that into my map. And now, here's the result. As you can see, it looks awesome, and it sounds awesome. I gave the projectile a bright yellow tint so that you could see it coming from the player going outwards. Now let's just finish this off by killing everything. Of course, one noticeable problem is that the bullets actually spawn on the ground instead of from the rifle. So that obviously needs to be fixed, but right now, that's not important. Aside from that, the basic attack for a hero is now complete. If I really wanted to, I could leave this as is and have some sort of simple, crazy fun, Smash TV style map, and then call it good. But no, I want more in-depth gameplay. I want gameplay that separates the boys from the men. I want a higher skill cap. So in the next episode of Deep Blue, I'm going to implement a system that takes into account accuracy and recoil. So instead of spraying and praying all over the place, you're going to have to pick your shots carefully. So until then, look forward to it. I'll see you next time.